Good morning, good afternoon, and uh, warmly welcome all to the session, the benefits of tourism businesses involvement in cooperative learning. First of all, I would like to thank all our panelists, Antonio Vasquez San Martin, Head of Marketing of Hotel Management School of Galicia, Nuno Barbosa, Viva Experiencia Associated Partner of Polytechnic Institute of Viano do Castello, uh, Ivona Michelic Karabatic, LCT Travel Associated Partner of University of Split, Paul Fares, Tourismo Associated Partner of University of Girona, Katarzyna uh, Warhol, um, Westin Dragonara Resort Malta, Associate Partner of University of Malta, and uh, Nicola de Torino, TH Resort, Courmayeur, uh, Associate Partner of University of Bergamo. Sorry if I make mistake uh, with my pronounce, uh, your, pronouncing your names. Um, this session aims to show the benefits coming from adopting a model based on a cooperative learning. We will start with a good practice, then starting the debate with our panelists. I leave the speech to Antonio Vasquez San Martin, Head of Marketing of Hotel Management School of Galicia, and this is education in tourism with a modus operandi similar to dual education will adopt the dual brand starting next academic year. The video is yours, Antonio. Thank you, Paolo. Um, I have prepared a presentation for this session. Uh, I don't know if um, you would like to see or not. I mean, uh, just uh, uh, I don't know if everybody's familiar with the with the topic we are seeing today. And uh, well, I'm, I'm, um, I will start with the presentation anyway. So see if it, how it goes, and then um, we'll see on the on the debate afterwards. Okay, let me share the present. Let me share the screen. Bear with me. Uh, if you see if um, let's stop one, two. I think it is. I'm not familiar with Zoom here because we're using Teams. We're using many, many, uh, many tools. Hold on a sec. Mm. Slide only. Stop to see if we go like this. Can you see, uh, I think I got a bit of an issue with the presentation. Let's see how you can see my screen now. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna do a quick sport. I'll see if it goes. Sorry about that. I'm just uh, trying to get the screen. So if uh, Antonio necesita de ayuda de nuestra parte. Uh, yeah, I think I think I got because uh, um, I think the Zoom is asking me for preferences. Um, hold on, I'm just uh, trying to get my. Can you see my screen? Any, any, any in kind of your? No, I think you don't see my screen, right? Not yet. Can you see my screen but at all? No, not yet. Not yet, because I'm supposed to be sharing the screen. Uh, hold on, let's see now. Uh, it's asking me for system preferences. I think some sort of an issue here with the permits of the 
I think it is now. I think I have to quit and reopen. Hold on for me. Hold on. I just have to leave now and I come back. Vamos aguardar só uns segundos. Uh, let's wait just a few minutes. Meanwhile, Antonio is restarting. Right, okay. So, well, let's try again. Sorry about that. see if uh, it's a question of because I, I've just installed uh, Zoom in my computer and it doesn't let me to share the screen. Uh, now I think it is like that. And now it's, it's working, I think. Right. Yeah. Can you see the screen right now? Yeah. Yes, I can. Right. Great. So now just to, to play. No, it doesn't work. So for some reason, that's it. That's it. Uh, well, put it in. Uh, okay, right. So uh, it doesn't let me to play the, the the screen, but you can see the the, the building, one of the buildings of the of the, the school. Can you see my screen, right? Right, so uh, I'm Antonio Vázquez. I'm the head of marketing of the Centro Superior de Hostelería de Galicia. Uh, the topic today, um, just I did some sort of research because I'm, I'm not familiar with the cooperative learning as, as it is, as the name. So just what, what I found on, on some of the research papers, cooperative learning says that it takes place when I'm with members of a small group of um, work together to maximize not only uh, the individual learning, but also the learning of the other members of the group. But the, I found another um, definition, which uh, relates to cooperative education, which is a structured method of combining classroom-based education with practical work experience. So as I understand, cooperative education theory and practice goes into wine, so go, goes very linked. Yeah, but our school, uh, our school programs are based on that principle of learning. So it's the principle of learning in two places, which is uh, and in two sources, one practical and one theory. I say two sources because uh, the school provides the students with both academic and practical qualifications, and a hospitality company complements that with practical qualifications. So the two sources and two two places, right? So we have successfully implemented this type of learning for more than 26 years in a higher education environment. But let me first introduce who is the Hotel Management School of Galicia, or how is known in Spain, Centro Superior de Hostelería de Galicia. So if I just pass the next slide, so I can move that. Sorry about that because it's a bit a bit of a doesn't move. Ah, nice one. Okay, uh, so a bit of history about the school. So our, our curriculum uh, combines higher education and on-the-job training at more that than fifty. Uh, partner companies aiming to provide with both academic skills, work-related expertise, and above all, uh, soft skills, enriching the personal development of our students and graduates. For us, um, workplace learning is considered the key for an effective strategy for the development of vocation and career and professional identity of our graduates. The Hotel Management School of Galicia, as a project, started in 1993. So it's 26 years ago, as a solution to the needs that the hospitality industry had 
regarding qualified hotel and restaurant managers. For this, uh, the regional government of Galicia, the Junta of Galicia, developed an ambitious project to train future professionals through the company in charge of the promotion of the tourism in Galicia. And that, that name of the, the company of the name was uh, Tour Galicia at the time. Now it's the tourism board of Galicia. The school is located in Santiago de Compostela, uh, a cozy and warm UNESCO World Heritage Site or city in northwest Spain, just above Portugal, which has uh, received and receives millions of international visitors and pilgrims every year. As a home of the remains of St. James is also the, the end of the, the way of St. James. Uh, this environment makes the city a very competitive place for the hospitality business with many top rated hotels and restaurants in a city with less than 100,000 people. So the idea was to create a, pre a prestigious school with the best results and the most efficient, efficient methodology. To achieve this, uh, the project had the support of the University of Santiago de Compostela and the Le Col of the Lille de Lausanne. The Suisse School designed the study plan, course methodology, buildings and distribution of classrooms and the selection of our teaching personnel. Uh, 50,000 square meter campus uh, with existing five buildings was refurbished to the needs and specific requirements to the specific requirements of the project. With a good share of uh, working abroad and good career prospects, since the, the first graduation, more than 3,000 uh, graduates had been experienced this school, either as a way of life and also as the beginning of their careers. So, but what we teach. Currently, we have two degrees. Uh, one is a two-year degree, uh, a culinary science and restaurant management, and a four-year four -year degree related to the hotel management. Uh, I will explain the detail, which is the one we have in the, in the slide. The four-year degree, as it has been over the years, the one it reflects the most, the process of using theory and practice together with internships. Uh, the thing is, uh, next year, um, this degree will be, um, will fully comply with the Bologna standards, making it uh, um, an official degree in Spain. At the moment, it's a degree link to the University of Santiago de Compostela, only recognized um, as um, university degree in, uh, in Spain. But afterwards, we hope that this will move on to the uh, all European standards and so we can have all this uh, connection with other universities. Um, as I said, it's a four year degree, uh, which is the most common and uh, where most of our students are. Uh, for this degree, this degree, the applicants to this program need to pass uh, an assessment test uh, and an interview. Plus comply with all the higher uh, high school qualifications required to get access to the university in Spain if they finally want to get enrolled. So focus on our methodology, in a nutshell, the hotel management degree is a four year uh, university like bachelor. The first two years, which is, um, is, is combining um, alternates, sorry, one week, which is in blue, and another week in green. So it, combi it combines uh, theory and practice, following a three month uh, internship. This is for the next, for the first two years uh, in, the, in the course, on the program. The last two years, the theory is combined with essays and works uh, and longer internships, topping up to 16 months in duration of the internships in total. A dissertation is also uh, necessary to finish the, the degree as required. So, but how it works. So this, since the start of the semester at the hotel management of a school campus, the student alternates week of theory and one week of practice. Our students from day one participate in all academic and practical activities in their business or practical role attire. So in the, in a, using a, this address code, whether it is he or she is in the cafeteria, a service uniform provided by the school is used and it has to be worn at all times. 
at the restaurant, kitchens, professional grade uniforms and utensils are also provided by the school. A theory classes, business dress code is strictly required. Suits for male students and dresses, trousers or, or skirts or jackets for, males, for female students. No need to mention that some visible tattoos and piercing are forbidden. The reason behind this, it is we try to embody the hospitality spirit and the values that represent the business or of uh, this, the business our students will manage or we aim to manage. Uh, we know that the hospitality industry is a dynamic and changing world with new products and brands that disrupt this image every day. But at the moment, we try to imprint these values to, uh, into our students. And this is also part of our brand and how we are known. We also set a rule book, not only for appearance, but for behavior. Customer service is at the core of the hospitality business. The way you talk or dress to your teachers or peers requires a formal name. In Spanish, we have the case of usted. It's a more formal uh, way to address uh, people. So that's what, we try to use. Sorry, that's what we try to use. In terms of subjects, uh, in the first year, we have um, operations uh, for food and service operations, uh, food, and mama, food and beverage. Um, service, uh, wine science, alcoholic beverages, culinary um, practices, uh, culinary theory, management and control of food and beverage, and also the, the internships, together with uh, languages, um, uh, management um, subjects, computer science, etc. No? The second year, uh, we move from the food and beverage and service to everything related to rooms division. So housekeeping, um, reception, um, all the uh, subjects together with more languages, English and German or, or French as optional, uh, together with um, statistics, law, marketing, uh, as I said, business or subjects related to more like business and administration degree. The third and the fourth year, instead of focusing into the more practice uh, subjects, we move to the management side. The management side in terms of um, managing departments and general management. So we're trying to uh, work on team, team building, um, essays, uh, dissertations, um, and we move the focus to focus to, to those uh, subjects and knowledge. So we leave the practical uh, side of um, hands-on practice to the more managing uh, side, of, side of things. So following the, um, the degree or the, the course, um, move to the, the theory part. The theory part, theory subjects are largely developed in the main building. So if you think of the campus as a big simulator, so we have a main building with the standard classrooms with desk and touchscreen boards, ITC and language labs are also used. Currently we have uh, classrooms that hold no more than 15 students per class. So they're very small. Hotel, hotel reception classrooms, uh, wine tasting labs, multipurpose and kitchen demonstration classrooms uh, complete the, the theory setup. In terms of practice, uh, we, have, uh, we, we have to distinguish between on-campus practice and internships or work placements. Uh, on-campus, um, I think this, together with internships, is what makes the, the school unique from our, um, for the rest of the universities and faculties. We have to think in Spain, uh, schools, schools like this, like our school, there are three or four Capable of, capable of um, providing um, degrees in uh, hotel management, as as we are as with the with the practice and theory combined. So for that purpose, um, we have two fully working restaurants, a hotel with ten rooms, a laundry, and a bar cafeteria. In all, this is a big simulator, as I said, where students are exposed to food handling processes. They have to liaise with providers and restaurant customers on a number of occasions. Classes are organized by alternating them with the theory classes in shifts, so in rotors. 
First year students have shifts or rotations where they spend a couple of weeks throughout the semester, for example, in the cafeteria, learning all the services, operations, and bar practices. They also spend time at the restaurants, kitchens, preparing food, preparing banqueting, events, etc. Restaurant etiquette services uh, also. This is a cross-disciplinary approach. Uh, as, it hands -on, as this hands-on uh, practice or classes, sessions, are also supported by what they learned the week before in the theory sessions. Groups generally are made of um, up to four students. So they enjoy a very exclusive and personalized, personalized teaching. This is for many a key moment or a moment of truth as most of our students do not have previous work or customer facing experience. Students uh, this way develop a personal and a job related competencies that are useful for daily work routines. And at the same time, they acquire theoretical knowledge and a controlled workspace. So they have uh, a safety net. The practice sessions are designed as a real life situations and the objective is twofold. Firstly, the student familiar with the standard industry practice. So, sorry, firstly, they get, uh, we get the student familiar with the standard industry practices and procedures. Secondly, from the management perspective, we introduce the student into tasks that require managing a team and being part of a team where they can see the end result of the job as and to do and it's his success rate or he or her success rate. Here, the student starts building and realizing these emotional intelligence skills required to develop this kind of job that it will be part of the valuable set of tools that they will take with him or her to, to the work placements or internships. Antonio, my apologies. Uh, yep. Can you, it's a quite unfair for me, but uh, can you speed up your? Okay, oh, sure. We have precise timing to respect. Okay, sorry about that. It's just, uh, sorry about the delay. Okay, um, I'm moving to the internships. Um, the work placements, uh, because it's every, two, every, um, every student have a, uh, an assignment. Uh, the aim is to increase the motivation of the students. Companies are invited to uh, or asked to be uh, to present the business activity and the training plan for all the students. And students are required to attend these presentations, given, given by hotel managers uh, or human resources staff. This way, the students get to know the companies and have the necessary information to validate, to validate them all. Um, we make this assignment uh, in terms of, um, we provide the students with uh, these companies uh, in terms of the student's academic and personal profile, the preferences of the student, uh, the profile demanded by the company. Uh, and then the students, they get to choose uh, in some of the occasions that where, they, where they're going to do the, 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 uh, the work placements. Um, generally, the, uh, the, the work placements are related to the work experience they receive at the school and the knowledge they got at school. So the first and second year, the more operations related and the third and fourth year are more related to management. The also the evaluation of the, the student is made by either a tutor, which is assigned to the, to the, to the student and by the company at the end of the, the internship program. So they combine the, 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 the assessment. Also the students um, by the end of the, the degree, they have to do a dissertation or a final project. And just to um, just to end as a just a, as a, the times uh, the time is uh, is near, uh, this approach across the four year span of the program allows the student to obtain knowledge and competence in class sessions that they can apply immediately in, pra in practice. So it's uh, something they they take with them every year. So and they discuss this this. Um, uh, this with other with other students and obviously with the teachers. So they, I think they reach, they make the the, the whole the, the the classes and the sessions the the richer and the more up to date. Conversely, knowledge gained in the workplace is discussed in class, yeah, reflected upon and used as a main match for the theory. This will enable graduates with business and operations knowledge to connect and quickly take responsibilities uh, in any company they are hired. So 
is that this um, this experience and this whatever they gain in the internships um, is a sixteen month experience. Uh, they already get connected to the to the to the to any job position they will take or they they apply for because they already know the place. They they I mean they used to work in receptions. They used to work at uh, a bar cafeteria. Uh, doing service operations and managing departments or even being uh, part of the management team, top management team of a hotel, for example, or being a general manager. Yeah, I have more, but if uh, if you want to discuss that in the, in the round table, I'm open to questions. Um, yes, uh, I'm aware of the already surpassed the, the, the timing. It's supposed to be 15 minutes. I'm apologize for that. And well, I'm open to, to questions. Which I guess uh, there'll be some, some. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Paolo. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you for uh, such interesting example and uh, interesting figures. Quite different from the ones uh, we, I'm going to, to tell you later. Anyway, uh, which um, this, uh, this example which surely be of inspiration uh, to our forthcoming uh, roundtable. Uh, today, we want to imagine um, what the future could hold for us by managing to adopt the, the dual system in each single nation, making it an integral part of uh, university and business collaboration. This roundtable uh, sees the participation of uh, companies representing the, the five states of the, the project. And in the first part that will be moderated by, by me, we will focus on the current situation, if the model works and helps students to easily access to the working world. The second part will be moderated by Andrea Pozzi from University of Bergamo, and will be more focused on the future. We would like to show what is the, the situation of the companies and which in a perspective long-term view could be the positive and the negative key factors to ensure this dual system of collaboration does not remain just a pilot test, but becomes a generalized process adopted by the whole country system. But allow me to start introducing the first part with some key facts from Italy. In my country, about 63% of all graduates participate in an internship, but of those who participate in an internship, only 12% find work in the host company. Of course, I may say that these data are refer to all academic courses and not specifically all in tourism and the trainership are not compulsory in each bachelor and master degree course. There are many good example in Italy, uh, especially in tourism courses um, where university and companies work together as to better satisfy the need of both uh, and uh, uh, of students. University of Bergamo in Camp Partner is one of them. However, the data I previously presented show the need of further pushing a cooperative model from a broader perspective of creating a framework that helps both university and companies to work together. So let's start our round table and hear the two questions for the panelists. Can students in your country countries easily find occupation after being graduated? And do the current model satisfy the need of the companies of something more is required? The first panelist is Paul. The share is yours. The screen, sorry. Thank you so much. Uh, well, uh, actually, also was uh, I was participating in the income and with, uh, with an intern from our university, Girona, and I consider that 
of course, after since in our country, Spain uh, and Catalonia and Girona region, uh, the gross profit in tourism is thirteen uh, percent. So it's we are focused only in the tourist uh, business and tourist service. They have a lot of opportunities, and not only in the in the accommodation, transportation, uh, restaurants, or travel agencies. No, other companies related directly or indirectly with the tourism business. So they have a lot of opportunities and uh, the, the studies of uh, tourism, they gave uh, a range no, and, and a holistic view for this. Uh, concerning the, the relationship between universities and companies, I think that uh, I love the, the dual model in Germany, no? but here in our universities are more in the classical uh, room way and I think that they need to include more the companies and the private uh, view no? in order to explain the real professional life to the students because sometimes uh, the real life it only comes from uh, an academic view and don't uh, re- match with uh, the needs from the from different companies and different uh, sectors no and also to learn that the hotel and the tourism industry is not only mm. hotels, restaurants, travel agencies, and airlines. It's more than this. No? And it's all about people. So we need to know and to explain more and better about the people. But they continue and they will continue to have opportunities and the new opportunities, the new trends, and uh, the new uh, thoughts and, and, and also knowledge that we need to uh, give to our students in order to be better for the new life and the post-pandemic and the post-COVID reality. No? I don't know. I, want to, I don't want to, to give more time and, and thank you uh, for this opportunity to, to share with you uh, two minutes thoughts. Thank you, thank you very much, Paul. I pass the, the screen and the microphone to Nuno Barbosa. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for uh, the opportunity. And well, the, the experience I have to share is uh, basically the experience uh, as a close relationship with uh, the institution, in this case, IPVC. Uh, we have many projects that we uh, try to integrate and we develop with uh, the institution uh, because our enterprise also comes from a project that was developed inside of uh, the institution. Um, then uh, I, I don't know if you already want me to de- develop all the, the question that uh, is uh, followed. Paul? Yeah, sorry. The, the uh, first question. Yes, yes. Yeah, well, can the students in your country easily find occupation after being graduated? And the second yes. one, uh, if this model satisfy or you need the, the company needs some, some more to, to, to get better results. Okay, uh, according to that, uh, the, the students in the, in the area of uh, tourism that it's uh, what we are related um, when they graduate they easily uh, find uh, um, they are integrated easily in the market of course now this year is an exceptional year that we are facing this pandemic crisis and that became a big problem a little bit for for that and the students of tourism particularly uh, but uh, normally they, they find easily uh, the integration in the market. And then uh, there are some things always that can be developed, but this model is very interesting because it allows uh, the experience of a professional way uh, for the students and also uh, allows the companies to have contact with the uh, what mindset and way of thinking of students and also integrate like that uh, some new strategies in order to line up the, the enterprise way of working with its, this mindset that the, the new generations have. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks a lot, Nuno. Thank you.
Uh, now I, we, we should have um, uh, Ivona, but uh, we just had uh, uh, news that uh, she, she had uh, yesterday the vaccine and she is running uh, uh, high fever, so she, she cannot uh, attend this, uh, this event, unfortunately. Uh, so we can, I can give you uh, uh, Katarzyna the screen and uh, let us know what you think about the question, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me well? Yeah. Very well. So thank you very much, uh, Paolo, for the opportunity to speak up, for opportunity to be here. Um, the first question, of course, I do represent uh, the tiny island of Malta. Um, the island which is very much uh, based on tourism, um, which I would very much agree with Paul. Uh, we also have many opportunities in the tourism sector, more and more hotels, hostels, um, and tourism and businesses opening up. So the opportunities are up out there, um, especially in the current situation. Even though it did limit some opportunities, it created new ones as well, uh, as I can see from our hotel, for example. Now, having said that, I still remember myself as a fresh graduate um, looking for those opportunities to step into the career within the field and um, having those opportunities a little bit out of reach for me because of um, limited experience, because of limited skills. So this is where this project can really, really support us in um, removing those skills shortages. Uh, which are so much needed in the hospitality in the hospitality world. Now, question number two: um, Do the current model satisfy um, needs, or can something be done better? Um, I really believe that it is a great start. So, the fact that we started thinking about aligning uh, both um, of the academic um, the academic perspective on um, the learning and the workplace learning can have a great effect. Um, and this is also something which Paul mentioned that whilst we have certain um, technology and know-how which differs from one, one company to another, we also have skills and competencies which can be transferable. And those skills, if we work on them together, can not only help the student to enter the workplace, but also it can set him up for a more successful career. This is how we see it from our perspective. So it is a great start, and I think we should we should simply continue um, with that cooperation and with that involvement of of three parties of a student, university, and the company as well. Okay, thank you very much, Cara Karen, Katarzyna. Uh, now we give the, the the screen to the to Nicola de Torino. I thank you very much, Nicola. You know you have to speed up the reopening of your hotel, so. <laughs> You are very, you have a lot of things to do. Thanks a lot to be here with us. Hi everyone, thank you, Paolo. Uh, first of all, let me just say that, uh, let me just present you TH Resort, what mean in Italy. TH Resort is the largest Italian hotel chain in terms of number of room and the group that has grown the most on, over the past uh, five years. In these last five years, we passed from nine hotels to 30, 30 hotels, and we have a total of room of 4,814. Uh, so, to answer for the first question, as uh, Mr. Uh, Bertani said, in Italy, unfortunately, even if you have a degree, it is not always easy to find work in, in the hotel industry, but in general. It often happened that even if you have a degree, when you find a job, uh, you are forced to start from the bottom step, like people who don't have a degree. Then normally, normally, people with a degree can climb uh, the step faster, but the starting point is the, the same for everyone. To answer the second question, uh, let me say that uh, for the experience that, that um, I have had with the guys that I have the, uh, had the pleasure to meet, uh, for sure, yes, the current model satisfies my need and those of my company. 
the only thing that I should, the only thing that should be improved, let me say, would be simply to have more of this guy and for a longer period in a greater number. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Nicola. So this, uh, this first part of the, the round table is finished. Uh, thank you very much. And now I give you Andrea the, 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 the screen. And so for the second part uh, of the, the, the round table. Okay, thank you, Paolo. Thank you to all our panelists. Let's move to the second part. I will try to be strict and be precise in timing because we have 20 minutes. So we will focus more in the second part to the perspective of the dual model, to the cooperative model. So I would like to ask you, as we did before, two questions. The first one is if you have a closer relationship with universities and do you think it should be improved and how? I mean, what can be the benefits from improving this relationship? And specifically, the second question is about in what area of your company do you think that the cooperative learning can be more beneficial and why? I will start, of course, with Paul, and I want to thank you very much for your participation because I know that you have a strong commitment just after this meeting, so I'll leave you immediately the speech. Thank you very much also for yeah. participating. Thank you. Well, uh, I think that, and I put in the chat that uh, the income model is, is, the, is a great opportunity, no? and we need to develop more. First, uh, what we, the relationship with the university, I think that we need to uh, do more field trips and uh, go out from the class and go more to the companies and do the class inside the companies, all right? So we need to, to, to merge and, and to do an immersion no? to uh, the private companies. For example, uh, well, the sales, sales and marketing, how to sell a product, no? how to become a, a salesman, a saleswoman, a sales, a sales uh, people, no? uh, more in the reality, no? to participate actively in a trade show, in a workshop. No? Uh, it, this is the best practice, I think, that we can uh, adapt our, uh, um, well, uh, the, the, adapt the practice um, with the students. No? So they can go uh, together with a sales director in a workshop and look how they do. I think that uh, we need to, to increase better. And we have a great experience in Europe and in different universities. And I always said the same. I, I, I was the, had the opportunity to meet the people from Ravensburg. And I think that this, this kind of uh, university and this kind of uh, dual uh, and in, include the companies and the private sector in the university model, it's the, the great one. Of course, some of the academics will hit me if we are presentially, but uh, thanks Zoom, that will not happen. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I'm very, very, very sorry, but I have a, a very, I'm, I'm also president of the Chamber of Commerce and I have a, an institutional, a very important institutional commitment right now uh, in our government. And, and I need to quit. So I will love to be here and I will love, and I hope that we'll see each other again, like the last time was in Malta. And I hope that next time probably will be in another country. Thank you, eh? Andrea. Thank you, thank Paolo. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicola, Katrina, Nuno. See you. Thank you. For your valuable intervention. So I'll leave the speech to Nuno. The same question, and also if you agree with what uh, have been said by Paul about improving relationship with file trips, go out for university, creating workshops. So there's a need to improve, to push further this cooperation. And especially maybe uh, in what area of your company can this relation can be 
improve and can create more benefits. Okay, I was trying to activate. Uh, well, I, I agree with what was said before, and I think it is uh, very important for players to meet each other and uh, to give the chance uh, for the students also to um, be within the processes. Um, here in this uh, case, uh, particularly of income tourism, there was a tutor in this case, it was me uh, going with the, the students that were participating here in the company uh, with some very specific activities. It was basically the management of uh, the social network of the company and then also uh, in the preparation of some tourism animation activities. Um, I, I think uh, this model has um, a very particular importance uh, either for the students as for the companies. As I said before, uh, because uh, when we are working with uh, someone that still is uh, preparing itself in the academic world, uh, there are uh, just uh, lots of uh, academic theoretics and uh, uh, studies uh, and that uh, in somehow will uh, influence also the development of when we put it in practice and uh, then we follow monitorizing all the activities so um, the only thing I, I have um, to say is that we, we should go on uh, towards this uh, model uh, developing uh, and uh, in this case, it would have been very interesting if it was not um, the experience of these uh, internships during the low season. Because I, I believe that if it was in a higher season, that could become even uh, more interesting for the company and for uh, the students and the institutions. That's my opinion. Perfect some problems also to me with the audio. Thank you very much, Nuno. Okay, let's move to Katarzyna, so the reality of Marta. So what is your opinion about the perspective and what can we improve this relationship? And of course, we move into different sectors of file. We are talking about hotel. And so we would like to have also your view Yes, uh, of course. So definitely I do agree with the gentleman before me um, in terms of whether we do already have a relationship um, with um, the university. Uh, for myself, that was the very first time I had been involved um, through some sort of cooperation with the local university through that um, income pilot project. Um, however, as a hotel, I know that there have been many projects and many initiatives where we um, had either supported or reached out to the university in order to be closer to students. Um, I think this is something which should continue. Um, that's a great opportunity for us to start speaking also about different ways on how can we get involved. Um, this year learned us to be very innovative and I'm sure there can be an innovative ways on how we can implement um, case studies or practical assessments within the academic world. And on the other hand, show um, the students as well as academic tutors, what's the reality, right? So what are the workplace requirements? Um, and on the other hand, we can also learn from each other. Um, so the academics and the workplace um, on the job trainers or managers can actually learn how to best together develop those future leaders, right? Because we are speaking about um, developing the managers, the leaders of the future. Um, so definitely there's a scope uh, for more cooperation. Um, the second question, I believe it refers to which areas of the organization um, this, this project can be the most beneficial in. Um, we had an opportunity to uh, welcome only one student um, to, to join our team and that was in our operational department uh, in the rooms division. Um, now I really feel that both operational uh, side of the hotel as well as administration and so project or experience in both um, can bring a lot of value. 
As a hotel, we've seen many different projects which we haven't done before um, related to marketing, related to um, employer branding, to um, employee experience, as well as those based on the interactions with the guests. So I believe here it would depend very much of this, on the student, um, which of the areas he would see himself develop, developing and growing in and mastering the skills. Um, both sections, I think, have something to offer and something to gain for the student. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Now I can speak and you can hear me. Thank you very much, Katarzyna. Let's move finally to Italy with Nicola. So if you want to give your opinion, starting also from your experience and also the context that you are operating, which is Italy. Oh, um, as Katarzyna, I personally don't have a relation with the university normal. This is the first time. This aspect is handled by the Human Resource Office, but uh, it can certainly uh, be improved and expanded. Uh, normally in Italy, the internship are people who are not finished yet the, the high school. Uh, so these people, most of the time, have a, a maturity, a, a desire to work and a desire to get involved, completely different compared to a person who is finishing university. So, 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 so this reason should be improved and uh, expanded. Uh, about the second question, the main benefit of a cooperative system uh, are manifold. In this particular case, for example, they give to a company the opportunity with a certain maturity and a high level of education at almost cost zero for the company. This allows easily to match job supply and demand, which is not always uh, easy in Italy for uh, tax cost in general and uh, legal uh, constraint. Um, about uh, the, the, in what area of my company uh, uh, do you think you, uh, the, the corporate learning can be more benefit, beneficial? Uh, well, for sure, in area like uh, booking office, uh, reception in general, congress and banketing, and public relations department. Because in this department are, um, in this department, sorry, in particular area of the hotel industry, you need a good knowledge of language and a certain disposition for the problem solving. All this found uh, in a people that I had uh, to this project. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Nicola. And thank you very, very much to all of our panelists for your contribution. And of course, also for the presentation. Let me, Ricardo, just two minutes to conclude. Thank you so and much, in this speech, I We are trying to, to improve also our soft skill time management. So we are, of course, in the income tourist project. I think that all contribution and all the view from uh, the countries that we have today has been very, very interesting. Uh, I just want only to reinforce the message that comes from the various contribution that the perspective will see a stronger collaboration and the income tourist project has started and gives the, given the opportunity to all of us to improve the relationship. And I found very, very interesting what emerges from Paul and also the others that uh, this relationship may have the, may take the form of file trips going out from the university workshop. So a uh, practical involvement of students, but also the tutors in the university in the activity of the, the companies. I think that, and this is what I found very, very interesting from all the contribution. I conclude myself and leave you the speech, Ricardo, and uh, I thank 
all the panelists and also Paula again for their contribution. Thank you very much.